Today, looking at a great way to use your iPad as an external video monitor when you're editing on a computer. This video is sponsored by Pond5. If you watch my channel regularly, you know that I love my iPad, but that I have a tough time figuring out a great way to incorporate it or use it regularly in my video production for YouTube, etc. I use LumaFusion and I really like LumaFusion. I use a lot of audio editing apps, etc. Record a lot of voiceovers with it, but it's not really an everyday part, an everyday component to my workflow. And I'm always looking for ways to make that happen. And I just figured out a good one recently. Not brand new, new to me. And what that is, is using my iPad as an external video monitor in post-production with Premiere Pro. And this also works with other apps, including Final Cut Pro. Before we jump into connecting the iPad to the computer, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Pond5. If you create YouTube videos, et cetera, then you've likely used stock footage. A lot of stock providers offer yearly subscriptions though, and that doesn't always work if you're just looking to make a one-off purchase. I often just need one clip, not 50, and that's an awesome benefit of Pond5. You can pay per item. And if you do prefer a membership, you can go that way too. Pond5 has the largest online collection of footage with over 30 million video clips, and all footage is yours to use anywhere for professional or personal projects across all platforms, forever. In addition to video, Pond5 offers music, sound effects, photos, After Effects templates, and 3D models. So next time one of your projects needs stock media, check out Pond5. And if you use the link in the description, you can save 20% on your first purchase. Thank you Pond5 for sponsoring this video. All right, so this is an edit desk of mine. I have a couple different edit stations, so to speak. This is the one in my studio. And I've got my iPad over here, and I'm using a Mac Mini, an M1 Mac Mini and this is an LG widescreen monitor. And so the first thing you'd want to do is set up the sidecar. And it's very simple to do. All you're really using is AirPlay. So I will go to the system preferences. Again, I'm on a Mac here. And down here, there is display and sidecar. I'm gonna go to sidecar and my iPad is on. And so all you do is connect to select device, Blake's iPad. And now on my iPad, you'll notice that it looks like an extension of the screen up here, which it is. That's more or less what it's doing right now. And if you go to display, I've got it set up to be scaled to this particular monitor. This will completely depend on which kind of display you're using. And so will the arrangement. On different computers, I've had to slide the second monitor to the other side. On this one, it wants it on the right side. This will be monitor dependent. But that's all you do as far as turning sidecar on. Now you'll go into Premiere Pro, and in Premiere Pro, now you instantly see I have a video monitor over here on my iPad. I had preset this part up, but if I hadn't done it, you go to Preferences, Playback, and within Playback here, you'll see two monitors. I'll go ahead and turn those off. Now I'm in Premiere Pro and it's playing this is just a video I did late last year. The monitor now, the iPad, does not have an image on it because you do have to set it up within your editing app as well. Most editing apps will let you either extend the screen or, and this is the important part, and this is what I wanna do, send a full screen video signal to the external monitor. You'd come in here and I'm selecting the main monitor is my monitor one and my secondary monitor, which is the iPad, it's 1288 by 946 is my video monitor. And so now when I play it, I have a video monitor on my iPad. And this is great for a variety of reasons. This monitor, it's not quite as important on because it's such a widescreen monitor, but if you're editing on a smaller monitor or if you're editing on for instance, a laptop and you have smaller screen real estate, it's awesome to be able to send out a full screen video signal to an external monitor. The other thing for me that this does is since almost all the video stuff I do today, and most everyone's work is this way today as well, unless you're doing broadcast, but even broadcast stuff ends up on the internet, I like seeing my video on my iPad. When I'm QCing my exports, I almost always will play them back on an iPad or an iPhone just to see how it looks. Because if you've done any kind of post-production, color grading, editing for very long, you'll realize pretty quickly 
that every monitor looks different. And that's just a fact. And so what I often do is try to look at it on a monitor that most people will be watching it on. And so iPads and iPhones are a great way to do that. One thing to note is if you're going to be editing like this very long, then I would suggest plugging in the iPad, especially if you're using the Magic Keyboard. It really drains the battery quickly. Of course, you could take it off and put it in a stand or any way you want, or just set the iPad on a desk. Then the battery wouldn't run out nearly as quickly. Now, I mentioned I have several workstations. My other workstation in my office, I have a very expensive broadcast monitor. And so that also is what this could stand in for. Now, this isn't the same as a high-end broadcast monitor, especially for color grading and such. But again, however, it does represent the way your colors and your image will look on YouTube, et cetera. And that's super important. And so if you don't have a setup like this, or if for instance, you're doing something and you can't output to a traditional video monitor, this is a great way to go. Or again, if you're using a laptop on location, or I know a lot of YouTubers edit off their laptops, this is a great way to go if you don't wanna spend money on an external monitor. You can just use your iPad as that monitor. And while the iPad is not cheap, we all know that, this is an iPad Pro, and I think this one was like $1,200. That way you don't have to spend the money on another $1,200 monitor or whatever it may be. A nice broadcast monitor like the one I have in my office edit suite, those can be 4,000, 5,000, even more, depending on the brand and what you're trying to do. So this is a cost-effective way, especially if you already own the iPad, to have an external video monitor that works in your studio or on location. So it's a great way to utilize your iPad in affordable, but also in higher-end video post-production scenarios. So do you use Sidecar? Do you use your iPad like this? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.